sir what is a stroke and whether a stroke can really happen in young individuals a uh, stroke in young is becoming a very important public health problem nowadays stroke can happen anywhere from the day you are born to the anywhere to the day you are uh, you die that means neonates children young adults and the middle aged people are becoming more and more uh, prone for stroke because of certain environmental factors risk factors now which we'll be discussing subsequently so usually when a patient gets a stroke family or friends will be around the patient so how can they spot a stroke sir? yeah it's a very important question so we always talk to people saying that there is a mnemonic which is easy to remember called as be fast how can one prevent a stroke the primary prevention is before a disease strikes us we are trying to prevent the disease happening sir what is the role of physiotherapy or neuro rehabilitation therapy like physiotherapy has to start as soon as possible once the acute treatment is done hi everyone uh, we are from the department of neurology manipal hospital sajapur road i am dr lakshmi krishna consultant neurologist manipal hospital along with me i have dr shivkumar sir who is the head of the department of neurology manipal hospital sajapur road today we are here to discuss an important topic that is stroke in young that is when a stroke happens in a person who is around age of 30 to 45 that is less than 45 years of age there is a alarming increase in the number of young stroke in the recent times so we thought we will have a discussion about this to raise public awareness about this particular event so to discuss uh, about this we have with us uh, dr shiv kumar sir so sir what is a stroke and whether a stroke can really happen in young individuals it's a very important question i thank you for uh, the brief introduction uh, stroke in young is becoming a very important public health problem nowadays and uh, what we are seeing now is we all used to think older people are the one who is going to get stroke but stroke can happen anywhere from the day you are born to the anywhere to the day you are uh, you die that means neonates children young adults and the middle aged people are becoming more and more uh, prone for stroke because of certain environmental factors risk factors now which we'll be discussing subsequently so as we all know that stroke is disease where there is occlusion of the blood vessel and it can happen in any individual and based on the symptoms what part of the brain is getting affected people can have various symptoms so one person stroke does not look like another person stroke that's the most important thing you should keep in mind second young people are not immune for uh, developing stroke they can also have stroke so if you have any symptoms of stroke see that you consult someone so that you don't miss out stroke which is very important in young people as sir has said there is no age bar for stroke right from infancy to elderly anyone can get stroke at any time so sir what are the risk factors for stroke yeah see the conventional risk factors what we say for the elderly people is diabetes age Modified. atherosclerosis those kind of things are uh, common but nowadays we see a lot of this kind of similar disease like hypertension diabetes atherosclerosis or uh, cholesterol problems can happen in the young people also but what we should understand is in addition to this kind of risk factors we have some uh, unique risk factors which happen in the young people the commonest thing what we see is accidents so we must have seen neck accident or head uh, head injuries they can come uh, to us with stroke because they get their blood vessels injured and they can have thrombosis anywhere second we have seen uh, people uh, or children who have got heart disease like they can have congenital heart disease they can have valvular heart disease what we used to call it as rheumatic heart disease in the past and then there is an entity called as patent foramen ovale where there's an opening between the right and the left part of the heart uh, where the clots can migrate and can cause strokes other important risk factors what we see in young people is nowadays is smoking alcohol uh, illicit drug use yes. drug abuse is one of the important uh, thing which is growing and it's alarming in the young people which is one of the reason for strokes to happen and uh, of course uh, uh, as we inherit any other disease uh, from our parents and grand grandparents we can have some genetic disease which can also strike the children and the young adult and of course we should not forget that in females pregnancy is a risk factor for someone to have a stroke so the uh, stroke can happen in pregnant ladies or uh, uh, women who are using hormonal preparations which has got very high content of estrogen these people also are prone for stroke so uh, all these things have to be kept in mind whenever we see young people coming with stroke so usually when a patient get a stroke family or friends will be around the patient so how can they spot a stroke sir yeah it's a very important question so we always talk to people saying that there is a mnemonic which is easy to remember called as be fast 
so as the b fast uh, mnemonic stands we say b b is for balance or b is for having any kind of a bulba symptoms or we say b is for uh, some kind of a uh, 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 speech related issues then b e e stands for eye sense anyone who gets double vision or a sudden onset of squint uh, you can say that these people are probably having stroke one has to be more aware of it f stands for face where you say there is a drooping of one side of face or when they talk to us it deviates to the other side and then they can have symptoms and the a stands for your arm either it can be a leg or arm where if one tries to keep a hand you can see slow deviation of the hand happening because of the weakness in the hand and then speech as i told you that speech is very important if someone has got change in speech like slurring of speech or they are not able to understand us or they they are able to understand but they are not able to reply to us this is very important and the most important of this mnemonic is the t which is a time you have to time the onset of symptoms so once you know the onset of symptoms it's very important you rush to the nearest hospital which has got facility to treat the stroke this we call it a stroke ready hospitals so this stroke ready hospitals may be next door or it might be few kilometers away from you but always reach to a place where it is close to you so that we don't waste time so time the onset of symptoms identify the symptoms in someone suspect that there is a stroke and quickly run to a hospital where there is facility for you to get something called as clot bursting medicine or a uh, thrombolysis for stroke where you can infuse this medicine to break the clots so this is very important i think all should understand this you should be very fast in identifying the symptoms and reach to the nearest hospital okay so i'll start from that t sir time so what is that golden hour of for that for a stroke yes yeah, see for this uh, in stroke as we all know that there are two types of stroke one is called as blockage the other one is called as bursting open of the blood vessel with hemorrhage happening so in hemorrhage we don't have the option of giving any medicine during the golden hour but we have the option of giving this medicine in a blockage which happens because of clot so whenever this clot is there the ideal thing is someone reaches within 3 hours it's very ideal but up to 4.5 hours also we can do something by giving an iv medication to break the clot by chance if someone is not able to reach within 4.5 hours and you see one of the blood vessel is still blocked we have an option where we do something called as mechanical thrombectomy which can be done in selected cases up to 24 hours so this has to be kept in mind so as early as possible is a mnemonic but do not uh, make it lazy and then uh, come as late as possible so a minute lost is uh, uh, losing million of millions of nerves in the neurons in the brain so you have to be very quick in identifying the symptoms and reaching the hospital now as we have discussed about the treatment options in stroke how can one prevent the stroke sir yeah so it's very important so uh, uh, as we discussed earlier the risk factors for stroke are unique in certain age groups for neonates children adults old people the risk factors are different so one has to understand all these risk factors so basically it's called as primary prevention and secondary prevention primary prevention is before a disease strikes us we are trying to prevent the disease happening so how do we prevent this one uh, we know we have to take a lot of precautions when we drive a vehicle uh, to avoid the accidents happening second we have seen uh, people having uh, neck related injuries because of massage we have seen that in beauty parlors also where they hang the neck in a particular posture and they come to us sports related injuries can happen so we have to be very care- careful in this three whenever you are taking certain hormonal preparations you should be choosing a low dose uh, estrogen rather than going for high dose estrogen particularly in females who are planning for contraception and in uh, heart disease people we should be aware that they are always at risk of stroke so you should always consult the doctor and see that if there is any blood thinners required for that we should be on the blood thinners to prevent the stroke happening and the most important thing is avoiding smoking alcohol intake use of drugs is prohibited to prevent the strokes happening and then controlling our risk factors like diabetes hypertension cholesterol problems if someone has got and uh, uh, the most important thing will be the lifestyle changes for example if someone is not doing exercise they are very lazy they are obese weight weight reduction with regular exercises good sleep also is important because sleep also has got role in prevention of stroke so all these things to enumerate we have more uh, more and more risk factors identifying what is the risk in a particular family when someone has got a genetic disease also is very important for us to prevent the stroke okay. sir what is the role of physiotherapy or neuro rehabilitation and yeah. when should they start whether should they start the next day itself or whether should they go slow or initially itself we should do it yeah so it's a very important question because uh, uh, when someone has stroke we admit them 
and we treat them this admission is basically to reduce the amount of stroke what they have got and to find out what are all the reasons for stroke to happen and then we start them on certain medications so this is one part of the treatment the, the most important part of the other treatment is to prevent the stroke which we discussed already and the next thing is to recover from the deficits means the damage what has happened to the brain and because of the damage what are the symptoms we have for example we can have speech problems we can have weakness in the hand or leg or we can have gait problems or we can have visual problems so there is something called a stroke rehabilitation which is very important most often uh, the individuals who suffer from stroke they miss out, miss out on this treatment and because of this they live with something called as residual deficits means they will uh, uh, they will have weakness which is persisting so therapy like physiotherapy has to start as soon as possible once the acute treatment is done if someone is able to bear the physiotherapy we start the therapy of your physio in the icu itself where someone is sick and then from there onwards we keep increasing the physio in the ward and then we encourage them to do as much as physiotherapy as possible by staying in the hospital and due to some reasons if they are not able to stay in the hospital the next important thing is they can go to some centers where rehabilitation is specific or unique for stroke or they can do this at home with certain limitations so this is the most important the golden time for someone to recover after the stroke is the first 3 months you should recover as much as possible in the first 3 months you miss out on this golden period then the chance that you might remain with certain damages or certain residual deficits very very high and my teachers always used to say that the recovery can happen anywhere from few days to few years or even throughout your life it's not about recovery the most important thing is that we have to also prevent certain permanent changes happening for example pain stiffness contractures so there are something called as complications which can happen because of the weakness also so physiotherapy has got two roles one is to recover whatever the uh, weakness or whatever the deficits you have the second one is to prevent after changes which happens after the stroke has happened so it's very important that all stroke patients should undergo uh, therapy they recover or not the therapy has to be continued for a long time so i think uh, we are just winding up the session now i think we have a very very good discussion about what is a stroke especially with the reference to the stroke in young individuals what are the risk factors and how to spot a stroke especially which is very relevant for the public because they should first identify that this could be a stroke then only they can bring the patient to a nearby healthcare facility and we have discussed about the various treatment options like clot busting medicines or even the thrombectomy which is an intervention and the physiotherapy part of it which is also really very important in the first 3 months so thank you so much for your patient listening thank you so much thank you thank you lakshmi thanks